Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Today we're gonna to be reacting to this video with Ice Cube. Check it out and we'll get back to it. You ain't ready to put five years of grind into anything yeah, it's not going without happen. making a quarter. Right. Don't even start. Sometimes it takes that long to get over the hump. They are not ready to put in that work. A lot of people want checks, but bosses cut checks. You gotta realize we want the money, but we also gotta use the money to make the money. It's really about having that mentality that you ready to work because that's what it's really all about. The reward come when you get down and you get on your grind. Do not complain about what you didn't get from the work you didn't put in. All right, Kirby. So what do you think on what Ice Cube was saying? Uh, this It hits home to me. I mean, Alex, as you know, we do the 0.08 class, you know, the private class that we have when we talk about this. It's something that, you know, I discuss ad nauseum. People want instant gratification. People want to say they opened up an LLC and think because they spent the $100, $100, $200 to create an LLC, get a registered agent, maybe even open up a bank account. They think money just supposed to flow in. That's the easy part. I mean, I remember when you uh, when you text me about you just got this recent deal that you just got. I just said, oh, great, you're rolling in the dough. Then I said, okay, now it's time to get to work. That's it. That's that's what it's all about. The work everybody wants that instant gratification, just want paychecks. But that's the employee mindset of people. They just think, oh, so I created, I should just be getting paid. I should be getting paid. I should be getting paid. And you know, like we always talk about is if you create a business or if you even in real estate, if you're not okay with receiving zero dollars in the first three years, then you shouldn't be doing it. I mean, Ice Cube said five, five, I agree with that also. But you're just in there on the grind. You're just there to, you know, keep making it happen. Like you, you just bought your first two rental properties, you know, in the last, I believe, six months. It hasn't been that long. You bought two rental properties in in six months. You're just sitting there rolling the dough, counting the money, saying, oh, I'm about to go on a vacation. You just getting the capital, using it to reallocate it to get your next property or to upgrade the properties that you have and uh, be prepared for repairs and things like that and keep on grinding to build your portfolio. But most people don't want that. Most people believe, oh, I'm going to buy one rental property. And my advice to anybody, if your goal is to have one rental property, don't do it. Don't do it. If it's just one, don't do it. If your goal is not to have multiple, I mean, multiple, I mean, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something there, you know, at least five, then do not do it. If you're just, oh yeah, I just want one rental property. It will be the biggest headache in life suck of your life because you're going to have one rental property. You probably won't have a property manager. Uh, so you're going to do all the work yourself. You're going to have to deal with tenants calling. You're going to have to deal with repairs. You're going to have to deal, do with all this stuff. And you're probably netting, if your first property, you're probably netting maybe $100 a month. And then that hundred dollars a month is gonna be going in one fell swoop if a hot water tank goes out. If a roof need to be repaired and you don't want to pay the insurance company because you don't want the uh insurance rate to go up. Same thing in business. When I started the uh when I bought the barbershop, when I bought the barbershop, I didn't expect to make no money at all, period. I just wanted to go through the grind. I wanted to show people that look like me that. Hey, it's somebody that looks like us that will support each other to make sure y'all make money. I make sure my employees make money before I ever make a dime. But like Ice Cube said, bosses cut checks, workers just want, want the paycheck. And I made sure all my employees, they was getting paid. They was doing all this other stuff. They Everything, the shop was great. I mean, good to go rehabbing. So that was more money going in out of my pocket. Making sure security systems, making sure the equipment, making sure everything is. I mean, I had to buy the strip mall the barbershop was in because the owner of the strip mall was crap. That was more money. <laughs> there was more money that had to come out of my pocket just to make this happen. It wasn't just, oh, I bought a barbershop, so well, uh, let me go get, let me go collect the money. That's not how it worked in business. It's always about going through the process. The the goal I get is going through the process. I remember we talked about, and I know I'm going on for a minute, but I remember we talked about. Uh, buying rental properties, for instance, buying rental properties, and then he was like, "Man, this part sucks. You get the deal, and then you got to go through the sub part." 
That's the only part I look for is the suck part. That is the best part. Because that's the only time I get gratification. Because for me, how I set up, you know, you you manage your properties or whatever. As soon as I get it set up and then I do the deal, I'm passing it off to somebody else. So it's like, okay, there you go. I don't even think about that property again until somebody call me and say it's an issue. So the, my only real interaction in that property is when I'm doing the deal. And that's the part I love. I love the process. The process is the best part to me. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's just like in time, I'm sure I'm going to like it because right now I think it's just it's still a learning experience. So it's like now I got two and it was easier than the first one. Um, and then the third one will be easier than that. Like, I think right, right, right. the more you get comfortable with it, just like with stocks, you know, like when when I first started learning how to invest in stocks, like it was literally being up till 2, 3 a.m., like just reading, like reading on companies, trying to understand what is this, what is that, watching videos. And now it's like if I want to invest in a company, I know exactly what I need to look up. Like I know what to research. And so it's like, I know where to go. So it's not as like grueling as like the first time you're doing it and you get more comfortable with it. But yeah, I remember the first one I told you, I was like, man, I feel like I'm on crack. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just like, cause there's, there's so much like going on and like, you don't know, like you never experienced it. So you're just like trying to do all at once, but, but yeah. And then once I'm sure once you have like a team in place in that area, how you have property management, uh, you have inspectors, you have contractors, you already have a whole team built in those areas. So it, it's easier. And, uh, and I will say it, it doesn't, it, that does go a long way. Having the right people in place, the right connections. I mean, just having, uh, you know, a team to do work on the properties for me, that that's, that's a huge help. And then um, like, if, if I'm piggybacking off of you in the same areas, how you were able to like send me the insurance companies, like, you know, it's it's a little bit more tedious when you have to research, you know, what company does inspections, what company do, sells insurance in those areas. So if you if you have the right people in place and it's not as bad. And, and like I and like I keep said in the video, and this is the, the biggest miss. People get it very misconstrued. That's what I want to say. People get it very misconstrued. They think that one will create this wealth beyond wealth, but they don't do the numbers, do the numbers. Uh, I, I remember Rick Ross in another video when he was talking about wing stops. And he said, if you're happy to break in a franchisee business, you have to break even in three years, not profit. And then the people that he was talking to, they were shocked when they said break even in three years. Yeah, you go out through the grind. So when you work in a job and wondering, oh, why the why the owner is so tight with his money and all this? Because he had to go through years of not making money. He had to go through years watching his employees get their paychecks and, and blow them every weekend when he's sitting here probably on the phone with bankers trying to get more money to keep the business afloat. So as a business owner, you the one, you're the one that sit there at the loss at the beginning. That first five years, you're sitting there through the ground. And then I remember when, I mean, I, I had no concept of how, well, I had a little concept of how business worked, but when I bought the barbershop, it was like, so I knew the, you know, they making money, they making money, they making money, you know, you know, all the funds that I was getting as an owner was going back into the business, going back into, you know, repairs, remodels, this, that every, it seemed like everything when I first got the business, everything popped up. I mean, something was breaking, something was falling apart. This was happening. Remodeling, the guy messed up, the, messed up the flooring, and then he's a wall, nowhere to be found. It was crazy, but I kept sticking to the process. Kept sticking to the process. Now it runs like clockwork. And then, I mean, if you ever ask the manager of the barbershop, she tell you like this crazy mf'er talking about me will be calling, texting me at three o'clock in the morning. I'm asleep, but I kept calling, texting, email, calling, texting, email, because I just wanted to go through the process and get it right. I mean, now, the only time we really talk, I mean, unless there's something major going on there at the shop, only time we we sit there just talking about family. Hey, how's this going? How your mom doing? How, you know, family doing stuff? And then, and vice versa, she check on me. We, we make sure we have that great dynamic of like that. But shop talk is very minimal once you have the process to set. But 
It takes money, time to have that set. And the employees will make off at the beginning because you have to pay them. You will have to write the paychecks no matter what. Even if you're short, if you want to own a business, you have to find the capital to keep making it happen. Even if the money's short, you can't. I couldn't go to them one week and be like, oh, well, I can't pay y'all because we I had to remodel. I couldn't do that. They had to get paid no matter what. And I had to still improve the uh, improve the shop and the processes and everything else. That was money out of my pocket. So if you want to be an owner, like Ice Cube said, I, my number was three years, but I love his five years. If you're not willing to go five years without making money, then if you're not willing, I'm not saying you have to, but if you're not willing to go five years without making money, then you shouldn't be doing it. So that is a, a big concept that people don't understand because they think that, oh, you get an LLC, start a business, you should be taking a paycheck right out the right out the gate. That's not how the process works. And to be honest with you, I've been doing real estate since, what, 16? That's when I started buying real estate. So we're in, what, 23 now? I believe this is the first year I've actually used money for real estate to buy anything outside of Real estate. This is the first year. Not even I didn't have money, but I wanted to make sure all my properties was plumb, everything was good, everything was up to date, ready to go. Because again, the tenants still have to live there. Issues are going to arise. AC units are going to go out. Hot water tanks are going to go out. You have, as an owner, you have to pay for those. And then that takes that takes money out of your cash flow. But once you get it all set up, plumb and ready to go, then, then you could enjoy the fruits of your labor. So 16, so that's seven years. So seven years before I actually took a dollar out to do anything other than invest back into real estate. And I was totally fine with that. But now it's very successful. And then now the only thing I do is get money to come in and be like, okay, where's the next deal? Not, oh, I got a window. I got this. I got this. I have reserves set up for all that now. And then now I can start enjoying the fruits of my labor. But it wasn't first run of property. I wasn't sitting there like, oh, I'm about to go buy beans. I'm rich. Oh, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. I'm like, I'm done with this one. I can't. No, I mean, I can't. I can't. <laughs> going off of, uh, off of that, too, is like, I would ask the question to people that, uh, you know, they, they start a business or they get their first property and they want to buy a Baines or whatever, like, if your mindset is there, you're going to fail. Um, because the question is, why why are you expecting or why would you not want to go through the grind and reinvest into your properties, reinvest back into the business? The goal is to, to grow it. So if your goal is to, you know, have your first property and then expect that you're going to be rich off of that, you're going to fail like you want to get the money to rehab everything, to get everything in condition like how you did. Um, yeah, people, I, I, I think people would just, they, they, they do not understand the process. They just, they just have their mind in the wrong place. Like, um, and I mean, we started talking when I was 21, I'm 24 now. Um, so it's been three years. I'm nowhere. I'm not a multimillionaire, but I can, I can see, how I've grown and I can see results already from my investments. Um, and that's all that it, it doesn't take, uh, doesn't take 40 years working under a company. You know, it just takes, you have to give it your all, have no excuses, take action. And I mean, there's plenty of times where I don't want to do something, but I do it anyway. Cause I know I, it needs to be done in order to achieve the goal that that's behind that, that task. And you just have to have that mentality. You're not going to you're not going to be rich off the first deal, or the second deal, or the third or whatever. It's you but you want to use that money to grow. I have no interest in uh right now whenever I get another property using that money to go on a vacation cuz I know that's just going to set me back. I want to build everything and then I know that I can enjoy it later on. But yeah, you're you're not going to like like uh you said Rick Ross was saying with with Wingstop, you're not gonna you you want to make sure everything is 
set and good to go. Like if you're if you think you're gonna get the first franchise and then become rich, you're you're not. You're gonna fail. And that's why Rick Ross continued on to buy, I think twenty or thirty more franchises, and then that uh, conglomerate or that as a whole, the cash flow from all of them make him his millions of dollars. Not just one. He went and bought multiple, and that's the same thing with rental properties. You buy multiples, and all of them cash flow. Then the cash flow combined with all of them together will put you in the you know six, seven, eight figures coming in every month. That's how it works. Not just one. One don't get the job done. Exactly. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, share, uh, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in the next video.